Yo, what is going on, my bros? Glad to see you back here again. And today, ah, we got to take a look at my garage, man. It is terrible. I got Christmas stuff and turbo stuff and welding stuff. Hold on. Actually, I got the answer. So it's been a while since I've uploaded a video and some stuff has happened since the last time that we spoke. So we're going to take a look around at a couple of things and you'll be glad to know that the car has passed 2000 miles since the rebuild. So let's get into it. What we do here is go back, 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 back. So I am so proud to say that after 2,000 miles, it looks like everything is holding up after the rebuild. And that is amazing because that was the first time I ever rebuilt an engine. And man, that was stressful. There were some parts in there like uh, painting the pistons. That really sucked, man. I was not sure if that was going to hold up, but it looks like it is. So anyways, let's go take a look at some of the stuff that I have done in between the last time that we talked and now. Um, I ran into some interesting issues and I want to share the solutions and stuff with you guys. Uh, some of it's going to relate to the Max ECU, um, but yeah, let's go take a look at the car now. You know what's funny is that this is still the way that I open my hood. I literally have to <laughs> grab it here. <sighs> so here we are. Um, I wasn't really 100% able to get the, oh boy, look at that. I wasn't able to get the air filter on yet. I've just kind of been testing it and you can see that it's been blocking out some stuff for Sholey. Um, but the shirt's starting to rip, looks like. That's not good. This is just a little cut piece of shirt. Um, one thing on my list of things to do, if you guys saw, is actually get uh, the little downpipe right here with the air filter. So that's coming up. That's not going to stay like that. I'm actually a little bit frustrated with myself for leaving it like this for so long, but it's all right. It looks like the exhaust manifold, everything's holding up on it. Doesn't look like there's any leaks anywhere. You'd see like black marks where exhaust is coming out. It would kind of look like that, but on the outside. The only thing I really see is just uh, some blackness on the metal. And that's probably just from, you can even see it on top of the, on top of this right here. And that's just from stuff coming out. You can see all the black dots. That's just from moisture whenever I first turn on the car. It gets all over my roof, all over the hood. Look at that, she. <laughs> so I've noticed that there are a couple little drips underneath the car, and I don't know uh, where they're coming from. It's nothing too bad. Um, I was able to solve the oil coming out of here with just another oil cap. Looks like that's all the problem was. It is leaking just a tiny little bit, but that's probably because it's corroded in there from the magnesium. Um, one oil leak that I have for sure, you can see it right here coming from the plug right there on my uh, intake cam advanced solenoid. Ugh. So I gotta figure that out. I might take the other one apart that I have and uh, see if I can't like put it back together and reseal it correctly. I doubt that's gonna work though. I don't know what I'm gonna do about it. Maybe I'll just let it keep leaking and just wipe it off all the time. No clue. All my wiring's holding up. That's awesome. I had to put in some relays in here for various things. Now, one of these relays is actually being controlled by um, a little circuit board that I made when I was testing the spark plugs and I couldn't get spark. I, I think I burnt out some things inside the Max ECU and outputs one and two or, or something. There's two outputs that don't work anymore. And I think it's because um, I shorted them out, most likely because I shorted them out. I mean, that really sucks, but I mean, it is the way it is. Maybe it's just fuses. I doubt it though, because they're acting weird instead of not act working at all. But anyway, so a solution for that was to use some of the spark plug outputs that I was not using in the first place. 
because this is wasted spark so there was three outputs coming from the ECU that I could use and so but the the problem is they're either five volts or I don't think that they can pull the ground yeah they're only five volts because that's what uh, that's what spark coils are driven at. So you can only drive it at five volts or not use them. So I had to build a little circuit board that detects five volts and then opens up a ground signal so that the 12 volts sitting on one leg of the relay can get grounded through the other leg um, through the circuit board. Um, instead of it trying to put out 12 volts on the circuit board, I just did open the ground. So it was a pretty easy circuit board. I'll put up a, a, a little schematic and stuff if you guys want, or I'll do it. I'm gonna do a video on all the wiring for this car. One positive thing to note as well, um, the transmission seems to be doing awesome. Once I got the fluid topped off and I worked through all the gears a whole bunch, I think it was probably around a thousand miles or something like that, maybe 1200 miles. Um, it just started shifting like butter. As long as you're not slamming it to the floor in automatic, it seems to handle the power okay. It's not slipping yet. I doubt I'm making full complete power though, because I need to get the wastegate on. And that's gonna go right here. I kind of showed you guys before. So I need to get the, I'm gonna, I already have everything here and I'm gonna go through the parts that I have, everything that's gonna go on the car with you guys here in just a minute, but I'm gonna cut a hole in the side of this right here and then have a pipe that comes out and then have the wastegate here. And then I'm gonna have another pipe that comes off the wastegate and then goes down and probably just dumps to the floor. And that is actually the first thing I'm gonna do um, after this video is done. I'm gonna remove the whole turbo and then take off the exhaust housing and uh, get to work on it, gonna cut this hole and get everything all done. I'm a little bit nervous about that, but I've been nervous about a lot of things on this build and so far it's worked out. Oh boy. So once I get the wastegate done, that's gonna be really the biggest issue. I have no problem with running the exhaust all the way out. I mean, I built this turbo manifold, you know what I'm saying? Completely from scratch. No cap though, I am super looking forward to having the hood on the car and having the exhaust go out the back because after 2,000 miles, I can officially say that I am done with getting exhaust in the cabin air. That and it's kind of loud even with the windows up. Like it's not that loud, but it's loud enough. And I'd rather just have it done. So I'm looking forward to that. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at all the new parts that I have. They're laying down over here and um, everything that I need to complete the build, to complete the build should be here. So that is very exciting. All it needs is my uh, time and effort. So let's take a look through this stuff. All right, so not the box underneath, but this box on top right here, we should have all of our exhaust parts in here. That's gonna be our muffler, our little, uh, golly, I can't remember what this guy's called. It's our flexible piece. We got another O2 sensor bung in here. We got a whole bunch of flanges, whole bunch of stuff. So everything that I need to do the exhaust should be right here along with uh, these boxes here. They have all of the uh, tubing for doing the exhaust out the underside of the car. So all of my exhaust stuff is here. I think there's a handful of other little things in here that I need but uh, uh, that aren't for exhaust, but that's kind of irrelevant. We've got our wastegate. So I picked this up on eBay, I believe. I think it was probably like 80 bucks, 100 bucks, I don't know, something like that. And it came with the flanges, uh, came with two different springs. I think I have a seven pound spring in here and I'll probably end up shimming it so that it goes up a little bit higher. I wanna hit about 10 PSI or something like that. I think that's what this turbo can handle. But seven will be okay for now. I mean, it'll just be enough so that I'm not over spooling the turbo and it kind of gives me a point to start from. I mean, I don't really care if I'm making seven PSI or 10, I'm just trying to get this thing super tuned in and then we can up the boost later. Then we've got our air filter, 45 down pipe. I have to cut it a little bit, um, oil filter. And then we've got our uh, knock detection here. So this is a Arduino Uno. And then I think they call this a hat, I think, because it goes on top of the Arduino and then you can stack multiple on this. So you can put like a Wi-Fi card on top and everything. Um, this is the Dylund knock shield. You can see it right there. Uh, and this just, you connect knock sensors to it and then you hop in the software and then you configure how sensitive it is. And then you somehow connect this up to your ECU and boom, you've got knock detection. So I think this was about a hundred dollars or less together. And this should be a complete knock detection deal. And it comes with this uh, by itself but I shouldn't need it because I have already two knock sensors with two uh, connectors anyways, so. But yeah, so that's pretty dope. I mean, like less than a hundred bucks and you get a whole knock detector kit and the next one up from there is probably like 200, 250, something like that. It gets pretty crazy. So other than that, you know, there's only a handful of other things that I need to do, stuff like uh, 
I don't know if anybody else here has this car or anything around it really close that has the same tail lights, but the tail lights for some reason in this car, in the W210, love to burn out or not make connection or like the, what they call them pigtails that go in with the bulb and then it screws in and goes whatever. The, for some reason, the ears that touch the metal of the tail light that are supposed to make connection for the electrical connection, some reason they just don't. Why it is beyond me. It's gotta be because they're not touching or something, but I look in there and I'm like, okay, so what are you doing? You're touching, what's going on here? And it's, you have to just mess with it and then it'll turn on and then your brakes will work or your tail lights will work. It's ridiculous. I'm just gonna solder LEDs in there and then that should solve whatever issues. I can't imagine it's gonna break after that. Like how could it possibly stop working after you have them soldered in? It's not the connection to the tail light, it's the tail light connecting to the bulbs. Man, man, it really sucks, it really sucks. So I'm looking forward to not having that dumb problem anymore. I also have to fix one of the tires. Let's see, I have my little list right here. Uh, the hood, auto cooling fan. I have a button to press for the cooling fan. Otherwise, if it gets to 100 degrees Celsius, the uh, max ECU turns off the engine. And so that's always great sitting in traffic and, and then you know, you're creeping forward and your engine turns off and you gotta put it in park and then restart the engine and ah, it's stupid. We got the wastegate down pipe, Arduino knock set up, turbo exhaust. Yeah, going out the back of the car, I'm looking forward to that. No, I'm not even worried about that. I have no doubts. That's, uh, for some reason, I just feel like that's gonna be easy. I don't know. Probably not. I mean, I'm probably gonna have some serious problems. You know, trying to lay all that out on the table, I, I do have it planned to be separated into sections, but maybe laying it on the table is gonna be a, a, a POS, huh? Adjusting the overheat temp, because it's actually kind of low. Cam advanced magnet leaking and oil change. I still have not changed the oil filter. Um, and now that I'm at 2,000 miles, I need to do an oil change too. I wanted to change the oil filter earlier on, but I didn't, so. So I have the oil and oil filter for everything now, so I'm just gonna replace. When I'm doing all this work, I'll do the oil change. Everything's gonna be Gucci. Lastly, I just picked up a, a, a fun tool. Got myself an actual cutting torch. This thing is gigantic for some reason. Don't go to Harbor Freight for a cutting torch. This thing was expensive and gigantic. But it should get the job done. You can see here, this took me like two seconds to cut through. I mean, nobody here really cares about the efficiency of a cutting torch, right? But um, I was able to get some adapters that connected to my small bottles too. So it's got this, apparently this is a size A hose with this small like HVAC style oxyacetylene bottles. And then the bigger torch is size B. So you got size B hose. And so I had to pick up these adapters. They were only like seven bucks or 10 bucks a piece, something like that at the welding shop, so. Just a heads up for anybody, if you even are at this part of the video. Just as an afterthought, I forgot to mention this. The whole point of getting this is so that I can actually cut into the turbo housing. I couldn't think of any other way to cut into the uh, exhaust housing. And so I knew that I already had an oxyacetylene set up because I use it for my HVAC stuff and figured, hell, why does, might as well just get a cutting torch. And then that's why I had to get the adapters because I didn't have the bigger bottles. So yeah, this is what I'm gonna use to cut into the exhaust housing on the turbo. Anyways, that about wraps it up. And if you guys have any questions or whatever, just hit me up on YouTube or social media, whatever. I'm glad to answer questions. I don't have any of my Facebook information posted anywhere, but if you can find me, then you can ask me over there too. Add me as a friend, whatever you want. Although the people that are a part of the M104 Facebook groups and stuff, you probably have seen me around. All right, I wish you guys a beautiful week and weekend and month and probably, I don't know when the next video is going up probably soon i don't know probably soon though you guys can look forward to it hit that like button if you haven't hit that subscribe button if you're interested in more content like this and i'll see you next time